Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Sergio Ramakers about Feel the Groove, a track which he did under the project name Cartouche. Enjoy! In the year 1990, Belgium-based DJ producer Sergio Ramakers started the project Cartouche. The very first release of Cartouche was the track Feel the Groove, which became a big success. It made it to the number 13 position in the French charts and in the US it even made it into the top 10 of the Billboard Hot Dance Club play charts. In 1992, the guys from Oasis covered Feel the Groove as an unreleased demo, which they called Better Let You Know. Because of the 30th anniversary of Cartouche Feel the Groove, I spoke to Serge Ramakers about the story behind this track. But I also asked him about his award-winning remix of Freddie Mercury's Living on My Own. My first question to Serge was how the band Cartouche got formed. It started as a joke. Uh, the owner of the club came to me and said, well, uh, I'm celebrating the third uh, or fifth anniversary of the club and I want to give away 1500 singles uh, to the clients. Here's a photo you can use as a cover and uh, make me a song. So I made Feel the Groove, uh, ordered 1500 singles at the factory and when I came there, they made a mistake. Instead of 1500, they pressed 2000 finals. And uh, they said, well, you can have them all. So I give 1500 to the club and 500 I gave to a distributor of records. And he took it with him uh, on his tour. And uh, two months later, I got a call from uh, Patrick Buskholz, the owner of uh, ARS Records. And uh, he was asking for the record with the piano thing in it because he loved it and uh, he wanted uh, to make a deal. So I went to uh, ARS and uh, we made a deal and he re-released uh, Cartouche Field the Groove and made a video and it became a, a top 50 hit in, uh, in the Billboard in the States. Oh cool. So most of the raps and the vocals are done by Jean-Paul Visser and Mireille Tole. Um, how did you get to meet them? Um, first they were dancers and uh, then we uh, noticed that uh, Mireille could uh, sing and uh, Jean-Paul could rap. So uh, we booked the studio and uh, recorded the voices and uh, that's it. That's it. So uh, did they also take care of writing the lyrics? No, that was me. So what do you remember from the production of the track? Well, uh, it was very, uh, also very made very quickly because uh, I was in the army at the time and hadn't much time in the weekend, so everything, because I was DJing still uh, during the weekend, so everything had to be made in between the hours I was at home and not in, uh, in the army, so it was, uh, well, it was made on three, four hours, I think. Great. Um, so what was the most difficult part of the production? Um, the most difficult part of the production was uh, getting Mirel uh, on uh, on tune because there was no auto tune at the time, and for her, for her, it was the first time uh, being in a studio, so everything was like ooh, very unsure. And uh, so, what kind of equipment did you use for this track? Um, I used the uh, Roland sampler, the S550. Uh, for the piano and the 909 for the drums, um, a Waldorf for the bass. That's it, I think. Okay. Um, so, who, who was the first person besides yourself to hear the final version of the track? Uh, the owner of the club. Okay. Um, so, after the release, the track peaked at the number 13 position in the French charts, uh, but also in the UK, the United States, Canada, and of course here in Belgium, the track was a big success. Do you remember hearing the track on the radio for the first time? Yeah, I still, I still, I was like, huh? How is this possible? <laughs> so do you have any idea how many copies of Feel the Groove have been sold worldwide? Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. So somewhere around 1992, uh, Oasis did cover the track. Uh, it never got released, but they made a demo called Better Let You Know. Uh, do you remember when you heard this one uh, for the first time? Never heard the song. Really? No. Oh, it's, it's on YouTube. Okay. Uh, did, did you know about this? Or no, 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 not at all. We have to check it out then. Yeah. 
Um, so in 1994 you did re-release Feel the Groove uh, with some new remixes. Um, did you use another vocalist for this one? Um, I think so. Okay. I think so. Yeah. So the track is 30 years old now. Uh, are there plans for the 30th anniversary? No, no, no. Not yet, not yet. Not but yet. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So you were very active in the 90s. Um, besides Cartouche, you were also part of the project Teaspoon and you had some big hits with tracks such as uh, No Time To Waste, Mercedes-Benz and Sex On The Beach. Uh, was Teaspoon your most successful project? Uh, no, it was one of the most uh, popular projects. Do you think there will ever be any new Teaspoon material? Yes, it's one of the possibilities. We're working on a new version of uh, Sex on the Beach, so uh, we'll see what uh, what happens. Okay, something we should definitely mention as well is your remix for Freddie Mercury. Uh, in 1993 you did remix his track Living on My Own. Uh, do you remember when you were being asked for this one? Yeah, it was a long uh, discussion between uh, England and, and, uh, and Belgium because um, first they were very committed and then there was a doubt because uh, Queen was always number one in the, in the charts in England but Freddie Mercury as a solo artist was never been higher than number four and it was, well, it was a, a question that they uh, asked themselves in England is it a good thing to do a release of a solo thing of him so we said, well, give us uh, the opportunity to create a hype in the club scene because we had a very hot dance label at the time. And uh, we can uh, do it only on vinyl and make a hype and see what happens. So uh, we got the permission and uh, we released it on vinyls, but it was so big at a very short period that uh, out of a sudden we got, a, I think, a request for 70 or 75,000 uh, CDs. So then uh, was the moment that we asked on EMI, well, give us the permission to manufacture CDs or take over with EMI. And then that was the moment that they took over worldwide with uh, the release of Freddie Mercury, <laughs> as we know it by now. I heard there's a funny story behind the production of this remix as well, with, with the equipment. Yeah, it was uh, a hell of a story with, with uh, the samplers, because we just sold our Roland samplers and uh, got uh, Akai samplers and uh, everybody was working on the Akai except me and I didn't know the, 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 the gear at, the, at all. So I had to hire somebody in and flew him in from uh, England to program the whole uh, Akai with all the vocals of uh, Freddie Mercury. Okay, so is it true that Nile Rogers was supposed to deliver the radio mix, radio mix of his track at first? Well, uh, the radio mix was done by uh, Nile Rogers but was also refused because it was no... It wasn't uh, good enough, yeah. let me put it that way. Yeah. So at the end they used your uh, your version and that became the radio mix? Yeah, we made then a radio mix, a club version and a house version, which I never delivered, but uh, we did the club mix and the radio version, yes. Okay, so there's an unreleased uh, house remix of uh, Living on my own still? Somewhere in the closet, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so do you know in how many countries your remix made it into the charts? I think it was worldwide, it yeah. was worldwide. Yeah. Um, is this also the remix you're the most proud of? Uh, well, I did a lot of good and famous remixes, but it's one of the one of the top yeah. three. So, what kind of music do you listen to in your spare time? Oh, it depends a little bit. I like uh, tech house. I like deep house. I like some. Uh, very electronic, uh, minimal things, groove. Yeah, depends on the mood. Depends a little bit on the mood. Okay, well thank you very much for your time and good luck with everything. Thank you. All right, that was it, this week's vlog. My interview with Serge Raamakers about Cartouche and Feel the Groove. Serge, thank you very much for your time, much appreciated. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and make sure to subscribe. Plus, in case you missed it, I did another interview with Serge. That one is online already on my channel. And in that interview, we talk about the new beat classic, The Sound of Sea, which Serge did in the year 1988 under the project name The Confettis. So make sure to check that one out as well. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.